I can show you the world. Shining Shimmering Podcast. I'm your host, Bear Condenser, and this is Disney Madness. Let's go! What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Bear Condenser. Welcome to episode two of Disney Madness. I hope you enjoyed that little impromptu theme song there because I don't have an official theme song. So there you go. A whole new world, Bear Conified, Disney Madnessified. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Music, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, also, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see I'm in a very relaxed environment. I'm holding my mic instead of just leaving it on the desk. I'm on a couch. I'm by some Disney stuffed animals. I mean, this is great. I love this setup. I'm really happy about this setup. So I think I'm gonna keep it. We're gonna see how well this goes. Uh, but I gotta tell you, so far, I'm really liking it. And also, I would like to state an apology. Episode one came out late July. It is September 12th. So I apologize. <laughs> um, a lot of things have happened. Um, if you keep up with me on Instagram, Twitter, at BearCondiOfficial, go follow while you can. If you keep up with me there, you will know that besides Disney, my passion is acting. I am trying my very best to be an actor. I actually have another podcast called The Theater Corner if you're interested in that. Um, but spoiler alert, spoiler alert, I had pretty much a month break long, a month long break with that show as well. Uh, because I recently got some jobs in the acting department that I've been really proud to be a part of. Um, so it's kind of held me back a little bit, but I'm back here. I'm ready to be more consistent, have a weekly show, and I'm ready with episode two, and I hope you guys are ready to have me along. And if you are excited to join me, I'm just excited that you are here listening. So that's awesome. Let's start talking about Disney. I'm really excited because I just actually opened up my D23 membership gift. It's the first time I've ever really been a part of D23. I've been a member for a few months. There was like some sale and I kind of jumped on it and um, I got my gift finally. Uh, to be honest, I think I've had it for a while. I just didn't know I had it. It's been sitting in my closet um, and I didn't realize I had it. So I was excited to finally open the thing. Um, so that was, a, this morning's been great in that regards. Um, so yeah, I'm posting an unboxing video on YouTube if you want to check it out. If you're not watching this, you're listening to this, Bear Cundy Official is the YouTube channel. Fair warning, there's going to be more things than just Disney. It's pretty much me. Um, but hey, you may enjoy it. Anyway, I have an unboxing video there, so I'm super excited about that. Um, also, D23 just happened. The expo, we got so many great Disney news, and I am just bursting at the seams. I really am. I'm so, so excited for Disney Plus. I'm really stoked. Um, I gotta tell you, that's gonna be such an amazing platform. And I'm such a sports guy too. So the fact that there's gonna be a $12.99 bundle that has Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus, I mean, I am going to cry pretty much every day. Um, and I have no shame about that because I love all things Disney. I love all things ESPN. And you know, I can love all things Hulu. So $12.99, that's the package I'm going for. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going for that package. Um, also, we got a lot of really great announcements. We got some fun, a fun Christmas movie on the way with Anna Kendrick, Noella, uh, Noella, I think that's what it's called. We have a fun Jeff Goldblum show, which is pretty much just Jeff Goldblum being Jeff Goldblum. We have a high school musical remake slash not a remake. It's weird, it's a TV show taking place at East High, the actual East High where they shot High School Musical, about kids putting on the production High School Musical. I don't know how I feel about it. I think it could either be really nice or just really bad. I don't know how I feel about it, but it's happening. So I guess we should just kind of accept that and go with the flow. I mean, we all know we're all gonna watch it. That's just how life goes. What else we got? We got the Mandorian. I don't even think I said that right, but it's a Star Wars show, which is going to be amazing because hello, Star Wars. I mean, if you're watching on YouTube and if you're listening on the podcast, yes, that just happened. 
I'll get back to that lightsaber in just a few moments. What else do we got for Disney Plus? I mean, we just, there's so many great things happening. All the Marvel shows coming, the fact that you're gonna have like the Disney vault just right there ready for you. I mean, this is gonna be really exciting. I don't think Netflix stands a chance anymore. I really don't. I'm sitting here and I'm scrolling through Netflix and I don't know what to watch anymore. So I'm really excited that I only have to wait like a month and a half for an entire library of something new. And honestly, one of the shows I'm really, or there's two shows I'm really excited about. I'm really excited about One Day, which is the Disney series about like a day at different parks all around the world. My bucket list is literally to go to every Disney park in the world. And I'm almost done with that. I'm really excited. I'm almost done with that bucket list. Um, I literally have Shanghai and Tokyo left, those parks. That's all I have. I went to Hong Kong late 2018. I went to Paris late 2018. And I finally went to Disneyland for the first time in July, literally after I shot the first episode for this show. Um, <laughs> so that's part of the reason why I was gone for a month because I was at Disneyland, hello. That's a great excuse. Thank you very much. Um, man, I'm just so excited for that. And I'm also excited for, um, oh gosh, I can't remember what it's called, but Kristen Bell produced and is in the show. And oh my gosh, I cannot remember for the life of me what it's called. But essentially, they go to these high schools and they find alumni like from 30 years back and they bring them back together to perform a high school musical that they did together like 30 years ago. So like they'll be doing Oklahoma, Greece. I, it's gonna be such a fun show. And honestly, I'm a theater kid. I'm sure some of you guys are theater kids as well. We all think about what it would be like to go back and do shows over again. We all think about that. Like I still think about it. one of the, my favorite shows ever I did in high school is Peter Pan. I still think about like, what could I have done differently for Slightly Soiled, the character I played? One of the lead Lost Boys, thank you very much. I still think about what I could have done differently. I still have ideas, like literally, sometimes I'll also be sitting there, I'm like, oh man, I should have done that. That would have been hilarious. That would have been amazing. Or I watch the whole thing again, and I just, I should have worked on that little solo just a little bit more, because yikes, that was not good. So we all have those thoughts. So. The fact that somewhere, somehow, people get to do that is so amazing to me, and I'm really excited to just check that out. I mean, that's going to be amazing. And we're going to go deeper into Disney+, Plus, closer to when Disney+, Plus comes out. Um, but for now, I'm going to move on to another highlight of D23, and that's, of course, the park news. Um, I mean, we got updates on the new Star Wars Hotel, which I think is exciting, but I'm not really going to dwell on it, because to be honest with you, it's way above my price range, and I don't think there's ever a chance, unless I sign like this massive uh, movie deal, whatever, I don't think there's a chance that I'll ever be staying in that hotel. So I'm really just not gonna bother really thinking about it too much, to be honest with you guys. Yes, when it opens and all that, if you guys really want me to talk about it, I'll talk about it, of course. But for right now, it just kind of makes me sad because I know it's gonna be overly expensive and I know the average family probably won't be able to afford it or if they are affording it, they're sacrificing things that probably shouldn't be sacrificed. Now, maybe that's not my place to say, but let's be honest. If you're charging $3,000 a night and you have a family of four, that's $3,000 a person. Yep, enough said. And I, that's an exaggeration, obviously. I don't think it's gonna be $3,000 a night. I think it'll be $3,000 for two nights. I'm just being honest. I feel like that's what it's gonna be. And Disney, I hope you guys understand that that's outrageous and crazy. And again, that price is just a rumor, so maybe none of that means anything. But we'll see for now. I'm not gonna get my hopes up and talk about it because it will get my hopes up and it's just something I'm probably never gonna be able to do in my lifetime. So I'm just gonna scratch to that, scratch to that, move on to something positive, and that's Epcot. They shared with us all the changes that's happening to Epcot. I love that a Mary Poppins is getting a bigger presence at the parks. Honestly, you guys, I don't really like Mary Poppins that much. 
I never really liked the movie growing up. I did Mary Poppins in high school my senior year, so I do have a soft spot for it now. That's the only reason why I appreciate that they're giving Mary Poppins a presence in the parks. But I do think it, there is possibility for a really cool attraction out of it as well, so I think that in itself is pretty exciting. So that's coming to the London area in Epcot, naturally. And they're re-renovating pretty much everything. And it's gonna look completely different when this is all said and done. And I'm really kind of excited to see those changes because I think Epcot right now is a few steps behind. I mean, Animal Kingdom with the Pandora edition, I mean, come on, that's breathtaking and amazing and still the best ride that Disney, I think, has ever done. Um, and then, of course, you have Hollywood Studios with Toy Story Land and Hello, Duh, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So that's a must-go place now. Magic Kingdom is classic. It's always going to be a classic place. And of course, that's even getting a brand new kick butt roller coaster in Tron. So Epcot's kind of fallen behind. And I don't think Epcot needs like a must do ride. I think it just needs some love. I think it just needs to look beautiful and look amazing. Right now, it's just kind of a concrete jungle. That's kind of what it is. Um, so I'm glad they're putting some work into it. And I'm glad that it's going to be this amazing place. That's not even going to look great, but it's going to have some great rides with Mary Poppins and Guardians. And I know some of you guys are like, oh, and Ratatouille, of course. I have some really bad news for you guys. Ratatouille, I don't think is going to be that great of attraction because I've already ridden it. And I wasn't that impressed. I'm sorry. I, I just wasn't that impressed. It's already at Disneyland Paris, and I'll have episodes where I talk specifically about a park um, that I've been to, of course, so I won't really be talking about Shanghai and Tokyo until I go there, but I'll talk about parks specifically, and when I talk about Disneyland Paris sneak preview, I'm gonna rip into Ratatouille, because I did not think that was a great attraction at all, and granted, I don't know, it was the first attraction I did of the day, I had a lot of hype for it, I was really excited, I was, mostly I was really excited because I knew it was already announced for Epcot, and I was really excited to be able to write it before really most people get to even though millions of people have been to Disneyland Paris and it's just I don't know it just wasn't there for me so I don't know something about it just didn't seem right and I do I will say that with Ratatouille someone behind me mentioned that it didn't it wasn't as good as it usually was when we wrote it which is really unfortunate um, but like I don't I didn't understand like what was supposed to go well, it was supposed to make it better. Like we didn't stop or anything. There wasn't any issues that I could see. So I don't really know what they're referring to, but as of right now, Disney's, the Ratatouille ride just wasn't there for me. And it's not something I recommend you waiting more than an hour for when it opens. It's just not. But that's not what the show's gonna be about. Today's show will actually be about a specific park and it's gonna be about Disneyland in California. So two parks. Because you guys, I had such an amazing time at Disneyland. It was my first time getting to go. Um, I've tried going to Disneyland so many times with my beautiful girlfriend. Um, but we just could never go. Because Disneyland, I feel like it's just so expensive. And Disney World's expensive too. But I feel like I'm getting a lot more out of what I'm paying for. And it's just... There's always... When it comes to money, there's always reasons not to go to Disneyland. Um... I mean, for example, we were thinking about going to Disneyland. We ended up going to Paris and Disneyland in Paris for a lot less than it would have cost us to go to Disneyland. So that's what I mean by it's kind of ridiculous. But I did just turn 21. It was my birthday in July. My girlfriend's amazing. She got all of my loved ones and everything. And if you watched and watched us listen to the last episode, you would have heard me reference to the story that she got all my loved ones and they all pretty much paid for me to go to Disneyland, California for my birthday with her and one of my other best friends. And that was such an awesome trip. I mean, I loved it so much, you guys. I didn't see Star Wars Galaxy's Edge was just amazing. So that's where I'll start. I'll start with Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Oh my gosh, that place is just so detailed and so beautiful and so perfect. Like so, so perfect except for the places that aren't perfect. <laughs> but the shopping was great. I loved it. Um, as you can see and heard earlier in this episode, 
I did buy a lightsaber. I did spend my money doing that experience, and I it was well worth it. I mean, the material on this lightsaber is absolutely just real. I mean, it's metal. It looks good. It feels great. I mean, it's just it's something I was really excited to be able to do. Um, and so, I mean, Star Wars Galaxy Edge was absolutely amazing and um there were some things i didn't like though um i'll start with the cantina the cantina once you get inside is beautiful the drinks are great i didn't really know what to do with myself though they say it's a 45 minute experience we just kind of stood there at the bar and i was really tired it was kind of the end of the day we just kind of stood there at the bar and we didn't really know what to do with ourselves because after you get over the initial shock of where you are and after you've had a drink you're just kind of like what now like what makes this a 45 minute experience and so it wasn't that great and i mean i paid like ten dollars for a sprite with a little uh pomegranate juice and powerade i mean it wasn't it's not something you do multiple multiple times so that wasn't that great docking bay the sit down quick service in Galaxy's Edge. The food is terrible. Like, it is not good. It is not good food at all. Like, I mean, they gave me a piece of chicken with mac and cheese, which was fine, um, and some asparagus, and that wasn't bad, but, like, Allison and Nick, who I went with, uh, had chicken and mashed potatoes, and they, like, couldn't even finish it. Like, they, like, the food smelled weird, tasted weird, mashed potatoes smelled like green bean or tasted like green beans and the green beans didn't taste like green beans and it was just the chicken wasn't cooked well and that goes for me too my chicken wasn't cooked that great either so it just wasn't a great food experience and it wasn't like they rushed the food because there's so many people there was barely anyone in the docking bay like it was like a quick got our food ordered sat down fine everything was just easy so that was kind of disappointing the milk, the frozen milk, is very hit or miss. You either love it or you're not going to like it at all. I, I did enjoy it. I wouldn't order it again, though, just because it doesn't taste like your traditional, like, slushy. And I don't think it's supposed to. It's supposed to be different. Um, but it's a very fruity, healthy thing, which isn't bad. Um, I had the blue one. Nick had the green one. The green one tasted better, which I'm kind of bitter about because it completely destroyed my theory that anything blue is better um but that's only th those are the only really things i didn't like about galaxy's edge like i said shopping was great the detail was amazing smuggler's run was a good ride it was a good ride it wasn't anything on flight of passage level of amazing um it was very i mean it's like a game um but once you get the shock of being inside the millennium falcon is amazing the fact that you're there is so so cool and it's just nice that like you're actually like sit positioned to actually how you would sit in the Millennium Falcon versus like rows and stuff like that I mean that was really cool and I did really enjoy it it just wasn't like over the top amazing like I think Rise of the Resistance will be and that's going to be something special I hope obviously I've not written it yet but based on the people who've gotten to go in, based on like their reports and stuff, the concepts of it, I think it's going to be a truly a special ride. And I can't wait for that. But unfortunately, we do have to wait for that. So we'll talk more on that when it actually opens. Um, so that's Galaxy's Edge. Galaxy's Edge was amazing. Worth it. So worth it. But I'm going to talk now about Disneyland itself, the park, California Adventure. And I got to tell you, I was so impressed by it. I really was. I mean, there was a lot of moments where I sat there and I was like, do I like Disneyland better than Disney World? I mean, this is awesome. I mean, it really was awesome. And the reason I say that is because I don't know if it was a nice change of pace, but everything just seemed better. Like Disney World, there's definitely more things to do. But in Disneyland, everything just seems better. Like rides, I mean, they all kind of mirror something at Disney World. And it's just better. I mean, there's some rides that are absolutely the same. Haunted Mansion, absolutely the same. Um, Space Mountain, for the most part, to me, it felt like it was the same. 
I mean, obviously they have hyperspace mount, which is the Star Wars version of it. But I mean, overall, same type of roller coaster and everything. But there's rides that are completely different. And let's talk about Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean for a start, the original one in California. I like it so much better, so much better in California than I do in Orlando. I think it has like one extra drop and I love that it kind of, there's like a restaurant in there. I don't know, I just love how much more leveled it seems. Um, that's like a small ride. Now the next one that mirrors each other are, is Indiana Jones and Dinosaur. Obviously different rides, but same format. Same type of vehicle. I like Indiana Jones better. I do. Um, Indiana Jones, of course, that's a movie that I think I just... I mean, that's obviously one of the most classic movies out there. And it's a movie that I personally love. So I did obviously enjoy that already more than Dinosaur. So I guess you can't really say much about that. Um, I will say one ride I really didn't like was the bobsleds. I mean, I don't even remember what that ride was called, but oh my gosh, that ride hurts. Like it literally hurts my soul. Like, I, I don't know, I can't do that ride again. That's, that wasn't for me. Um, other rides that mirror each other, in California Adventure, um, you got Rock and Roll Coaster at Disney World, and you have the Incredicoaster. To me, those ride, roller coasters are very similar. Obviously, they're different. But if I had to pick between the two, and when I say mirror each other, I mean like obviously they're both high energy roller coasters and there's really only one at Disney World and one in Hollywood Studio, or I'm sorry, in California Adventure, Disneyland, and it's Rock and Roller Coaster and Incredicoaster. I thought Incred Incredicoaster was so much more fun. Like I really loved the Incredicoaster. I loved it so much. When I ride Rock and Roller Coaster, I have like an adrenaline jump but like I'm never like oh, okay I need to ride that again like and again and again and again and again in credit coaster I wanted to get on and then once I got off I wanted to get right back on I just loved every second of it and I think it was such a great ride and I do love that it was outdoors honestly rock and roller coaster is still an amazing and one of my favorite rides and the indoor element is kind of cool with the different vibrant colors and everything but the Incredicoaster coaster just had a different and better feel to it to me and maybe again it's a from a movie that I really enjoy. I love the Incredible movies. I really do. And so that just puts it more at home for me. But uh, again, it could be anything. I just liked it better. Now, the next ride, Toy Story Mania, is pretty much the exact same as it is in Hollywood Studios. However, Pixar Pier in general is such an amazing idea and such an amazing thing that California Adventure has that I just love its location. Now, obviously, now that Toy Story Mania is in Toy Story Land, it fits in a different way because Toy Story has its own land in general, but I just love that it's in Pixar Pier because it fits Pixar Pier more than it could fit in Toy Story Land, honestly. And I know that sounds weird to say because it's a Toy Story ride in Toy Story Land, but it's already kind of made for something like Pixar Pier. And so it's just like the perfect marriage of sorts so i just i don't know that the experience the environment just made it more enjoyable for me but again that's the same ride so you can't really talk about that now we go to like cars land and california adventure also i think california adventure is one of my favorite parks in the entire world i really do i really believe that cars land the ride there and i think this is super obvious Oh my gosh, I can't even remember the name of the ride. I'm so sorry. That's kind of a big F when it comes to Disney podcasts, not really remembering the names of rides. But you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, I mean, I think it's like Radiator Springs Racers or whatever, but you go through Radiator Springs in a car and it races. It's the exact mirror of Test Track. It, it really is. I mean, that's just... As simple as that. It is a perfect mirror of Test Track, except it's a thousand times better than Test Track. Oh my gosh, a thousand times better than Test Track. It's so much fun, and it's beautiful. The animatronics in there are breathtaking. And it's just the perfect pace, too. Starting off slow, being a slow ride, then the burst of speed, and the story arc of it all. It's just so much better than Test Track. 
Because test drive kind of throws you at the stop, make your car, stop, wait, wait, wait. Okay, you're finally in the car. Let's go really fast, but it's you're not really looking at anything. You're just kind of going fast. Now in car, in this ride in Cars Land, you're going fast. You get something to look at. The scenery is amazing. The animatronics are amazing. It's just so much better than Test Track. And Cars Land is a beautiful land itself as well. I mean, when you just look at it and then you see that night, breathtaking. Absolutely breathtaking. And then the next one I'll talk about is... Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout compared to Tower of Terror. Tower of Terror is one of those rides that, you know, I love. I really do love. But the Mission Breakout is so much more fun. I mean, that's what, it's everything I wanted Tower of Terror to be. I mean, it's just constantly drop, 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 80s music, awesome story. You guys, I gotta tell you, these rides just seem to be perfected more and California than they are in Disney World. And I don't understand why. I mean, I get that some of them are themed differently, but that just kind of goes to show you that the theme in California is a little bit better. Now, like I said, Disney World is always home. There's so much more to do. And I think it's a more enjoyable vacation, but I think ride-wise, if you're going solely based off rides, Disneyland wins. It absolutely wins. And it was such a great experience and I loved it so much, man. All right, so I'm not trying to keep these episodes at hours and hours, and this is an early episode. It's episode two, um, and normally at this point in time, I will lo I would love to share Disney stories, um, answer any questions that you guys send in or comment. I'd love to do that, so please be sure to comment. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to comment in the comment section down below with questions, stories that you have about Disney. I'd love to share them. Um, and I love to talk about them, answer your questions and everything like that. I love to get to know you guys. If you're listening, I want to get to know you just because I really appreciate the fact that you sat down and took the time to listen to this. And that means the absolute world to me. Um, if you don't want to comment on YouTube or if you want it to be anonymous for some reason to the public, um, you can email me, BearkanDincer, B-E-R-K-A-N-D-I-N-C-E-R, -E -E at 1021 one zero two one company dot com bear condenser at ten twenty one company dot com you can email me your questions your stories and with your permission I'd love to share them on a podcast or a future video. Um so that's all I have. Oh and uh if you're wanting some more Disney magic coming your way literally in October we got the second Maleficent movie. Then in November we have Frozen, the second Frozen movie. So we'll have that to look forward to talking about as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you're watching, please like, subscribe, comment, everything. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify, podcast apps, thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe. Give us a great rating. I'd really appreciate that. And follow me on all social media handles, Bear, at BearCondi Official. You guys mean the world to me. I love Disney so much, so I'm excited to be a part of this community. I'll see you guys next time.